Tim and Capel with acoustic guitar and today we're going to be looking at dynamics, timbre, and time feel. Um, I got interested in this subject largely because um, when I was learning fingerstyle guitar I found it really difficult at first to keep the melodies that I was playing out front. Um, in other words, the accompaniment that I was using uh, was covering up the melody a little too much. So. I felt like it was hard to follow the melody and surely listeners probably felt the same way. So um, as far as timbre, dynamics, and time feel goes, these are just things that we can keep an eye on to help us keep the melody out front. And when we're practicing these things, it's really important to exaggerate them, um, largely because in my experience, when you take whatever you're practicing into a performance setting, uh, it's pretty common for us to to mute those things we've practiced or uh, dumb them down a little bit. So um, when you practice slowly uh, and exaggerate the techniques, it usually comes out better on the performance end of things. Um, so for this lesson, I wrote a short tune called The Neighbor's Cat, and we'll be looking at three examples from that to talk about um, dynamics, timbre, and time feel. And then we'll look at the uh, full uh, transcription of the tune itself. So in example one uh, in the article, we're talking about timbre. Um, so we're talking about tone quality, tone color. Um, and when it comes to fingerstyle guitar, you can manipulate the string in a bunch of different ways. Of course, you can use fingernail, the flesh of your finger. Um, if you're playing moving bass lines with your thumb, um, you can use the flesh of your thumb. You can also um, uh, palm mute um, the bass lines to get a, a more rounder sound. Um, in my experience, I tend to palm mute quite a bit actually. Um, that helps me uh, keep the bass out of the way of the melody. Uh, it keeps it a little quieter and a little rounder. Um, that's not always the case if you look at a fingerstyle player like Justin Towns Earl, for example. He palm mute. He palm muted pretty heavily, um, but it wasn't really that much quieter than the rest of than the melody itself. So you can be super percussive um, or you can um, be kind of quiet and rounder with uh, with a palm mute. So in this um, example one, we're going to look at the, the first part of the melody. Um, I'm going to use um, fingernail on the on the melody just to keep it brighter and I'm going to palm mute um, the bass part uh, and, and just use the, the flesh of my thumb. Um, So, you know, with any luck, you could hear the... melody in there, right? Um, and as far as, like, if you, if you want to palm mute and have that be a more percussive sound in the bass, you'd have to dig in and pop the string a little bit. Like I said, Justin Towns are old style. can't play like Justin played, but um, there, there's, a, there's a big difference between those two. A round sound designed to stay out of the way and still be a rhythmic component, and then something that's more percussive and out front and sitting alongside the melody, but still like thin and um, um, you know staccato enough that it, it still stays in the background a little bit. Um, but as far as timbre goes, um, it's important to experiment. So. If you want to try using um, finger picks, that's great. Thumb picks, um, it just depends. it's personal preference. But all of those will yield a different timbre, um, so it's important to find what, what works for you. Um, but like I said, in my experience, just using um, round thumb sounds and fingernail, uh, that goes a long way. Um, and so in example two, uh, we're looking at the second component here, so um, uh, dynamics. Um, so I chose this example because in uh, measure four over the A7, um, we've got notes that are in the same register as the melody in previous measures, but it's actually not part of the melody. So we have to adjust our playing a little bit to make sure that that measure is not heard um, or confused as part of the melody. So 
one way you can do that, um, among many ways, is to back off on the volume a little bit um, and maybe combine um, uh, a reduction in volume, but also um, use a little bit rounder timbre at the same time. So, okay, we're going to start with example two um, in the article. Uh, it starts with this G7 bar chord. I'm going to start at the um, normal volume that I was you know, playing the rest of the tune at, and then when I get to measure four, back off a little bit. That's the A7 shape. Okay. So when I hit that downbeat of the new measure, um, yeah, like I'm changing chord shapes there and it's kind of, uh, you have to do a little bit of a leap to get there, but you know, ideally we hit that downbeat with a little bit more volume. Let's try that one more time. Um, so the fourth measure, again, we're going to back off a little bit. Three, four. So, you can feel it kind of takes a breath there a little bit. In example three in the article, we're going to be talking about time feel. So I'm kind of smashing a couple different concepts together here. Um, time feel, you know, often refers to how we're how we're playing um, stylistically. So if we're playing straight, da, 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 or if there's a shuffle or swing or some kind of lilt in it. So when it comes to fingerstyle, it drastically alters the character of the song depending on what style you choose. So, um, so let's let's look at that for for a second before we talk about stretching time. So, in example three, um, again, this is an excerpt. This is sort of the bridge part of the tune. Um, let's see. Uh, so, in order to so playing it straight, everything would just be all in the downbeats. None of the melody notes would be anticipated. So, which is great. Um, you know, you don't have to play it quite staccato like that, but you can see everything's like right down the middle. Um, but if I start anticipating notes a little bit, um, and um, like where I place the upbeats. Um, you know, drastically changes the, the character. So like, um, so you can see there's a, there's a big difference there. And again, it's, it's personal preference and there's some leeway there, especially if you're playing solo, right? There's not, you know, you're not, um, required to line up rhythmically with any other player in that moment. So, um, it's good to experiment and just see what works for the tune, what works for your playing style. Um, so now the second part of this would be like stretching time. So, you know, you can think about it as rubato. So, um, you know, free from time, not metronomic, um, which is another advantage of being a, a solo player, right? There's no, um, you know, metronomic time happening that you need to adhere to to sound like you're on the same page with somebody else. So um, you can get super, you know, drastic. You can, to stretch time, you can just disregard tempo altogether. Um, you might have to alter um, your bass lines a little bit, like your accompanying parts, but, um, and you, you'll also find that guitar players sometimes like roll through chords when they're being freer with the tempo. Um, so you might have something like So um, that's sort of a drastic example and it doesn't, you know, the way that I would picture this as part of the, the longer tune that we're going to play in a second here, that would stick out in, uh, in a way that doesn't really fit in the arrangement. And that's okay. Um, again, like if when you're practicing these things, it's kind of good to go to the extremes, like get rid of the tempo and see what you can do with it. Um, try a different time feel and see what you can do with it. Um, nothing's written in stone. So, um, again, like experiment, find what works for your playing style and what serves the tune ultimately. Okay. In example four, we're going to play the tune down. I'm going to try to take some of the, um, elements we talked about today and work them in. Um, 
I'll try to exaggerate some of them, um, but hopefully what we get is just a, a nice coherent um, little tune uh, with basically a, a verse and a bridge section. So, okay, example four. Tim and Capel with acoustic guitar. Today we've looked at timbre, dynamics, and time feel to help us breathe some life into our guitar arrangements. Thanks for watching.